Sup, you chuckle fucks. It's your boy, Dark Raikou here with What If Issei Was Like Trafago D Water Law. Now, before I continue on with this what if, I'm going to mention something out right now. I have work tomorrow. I have to wake up at 5 in the morning and I got to get ready and other shit. So, yeah. Um, other than that, it's going to be a total fucking pain. But not the point. I'm going to have to record this right now. So, I, I probably won't even have any time tomorrow. If I do, I, I do, but other than that, I'm probably going to be sleeping, but yeah. Other than that, let me begin to sort of, let me shut the fuck up, and let me begin. So, we begin into Mosi. Well, everyone from Mosi Ria's, Ria's Grimmery's group, to Sona's group, and now Mosi the Valkyrie, who literally has, well, Loki in literally pieces, and I mean literally pieces, <laughs> because... She's trying to figure out how to attach an arm from the right arm to a left leg to the right leg. She's confused. And also uh, trying to attach the tongue and the mouth together. But yeah, she's actually going to need like someone who's actually a professional in this whole freaking bull crap. This is where, well, she hates the fact that mostly the Red Dragon Emperor was the one to do this. Instead of the Red Dragon Emperor to just grabbing Thor's hammer and sealing Loki away, he truly just turned Loki into fucking pieces. A fucking puzzle. Literally. This is where we almost see um, the Valkyries having a hard time with this. And she's going to have a worse time talking to Odin about this. How the fuck is she going to explain? Oh, sorry. The Red Dragon Emperor literally turned your son into literally pieces and I have no idea and how to attach him back together. Yeah, that's what mostly Ross Weiss is thinking. How the fuck is she going to explain that? Whatever. This is where, well, she then kind of just goes on. This is where, well, mostly we go into, well, uh, Rius and Sona's barrage. Now, Rius' group is surprised to see Issei again. Now, Issei looks like he got in much more, well, mostly handsomer. Of course, at the same time, he became looking like edgy. He, he did become looking a little bit more edgy than normal. Well, not normal, but just edgy a little bit. But of course, he does have that look of like he doesn't care about anyone. But yeah, he looks like he just does anything for himself and only for himself. He doesn't care about anyone else. Which Rius is actually going to try to figure out what exactly happened and why is Issei acting so different than what she expected. But yeah, but we go into mostly a time skip into mostly going back to the uh well underworld well mostly they already were in the underworld just back to the grimmery estate now this is where well they all teleport back or mostly where mostly they were at before kind of teleporting towards loki's battle but yeah or mostly where loki was at they teleported back odin was still there just talking to mostly azo and azo was kind of just looking at mostly the grimmery and mostly sonos parage and grinning saying oh you all you all managed to win so what happened? This is where well, Odin kind of noticed Rosa Weiss kind of just shaking and pointing her fingers together and kind of saying, uh, Odin said? This is where, well, mostly Odin says, yes, Rosa Weiss, why do you look so shaken about things? Um, so your son, uh, Loki, uh, about, uh, Loki, uh, he wasn't sealed. No, the Red Dragon Emperor, uh, did appear, but he didn't seal him away. So you're saying that Loki escaped? Uh, no. This is where, well, this is where Asa kind of noticed the box, the kind of wooden crater, and says, what is this? That's Loki. That's where, well, both uh, Azo and even Odin were confused. Loki turned into a box. Well, they, they do know that Loki is mischievous as hell, but why would he turn himself into a box? This is where, well, Ross Weiss decides to appear next to the box. Right now, open it and show mostly uh, Loki literally in pieces. His eyes are still moving. He just sees Odin, and this is where he has kind of fear in his eyes. Odin looks at Loki, then looks back at Ross Weiss, looks at Azo, looks at the Grimmery Barrage and Sonus Barrage, and then kind of notice while well, Michael and even Cersex kind of walking out. And this is where, well, Cersex has, well, mostly Grace to be next to her. And of course, this is where, well, Michael has, well, uh, what's it called? I think Irina was also there in the battle, but not the point. She was actually, uh, well, was she in the battle? I can't remember. Uh, yeah, I think she was with the Grammar Forest. I can't remember. But in this one, I should say she wasn't there. So, of course, she was actually with mostly Michael because 
well, mostly Irina wanted to actually fight along with Issa, but Issa hasn't shown up, so that's why she didn't go. But this is where, well, right now Odin looks at all all of them just come in, and this is where, well, Odin then looks back at Russell White and says, What exactly happened? And why do you mean the Red Dragon Emperor put him into pieces? This is where Russell White decides to speak up, and this is where she explains everything really fucking fast. Which mostly no one could understand a little bit except for Odin. It seems the Red Dragon Emperor has become much more powerful, but at the same time, he just didn't care about sealing Loki instead, just cut him into a million pieces because it's way easier. <clears throat> Which Odin, in his opinion, is saying, I mean, it is a lot easier to just cut him into pieces and then chuck him somewhere else. Whatever. That's where, well, Odin is kind of just shocked to hear about this, but yeah. This is where Sir Zex and the other were confused. Odin decided to explain and what exactly happened. And this is where, well, Odin explains that mostly the Red Dragon Emperor did appear, but he appeared kind of late into the battle, but somehow teleported everyone out of the way and defeated to mostly Finro, Scully, Hattie, and even the uh, copy version of the World Serpent, and also defeated Loki himself, but they don't know where he's at. This is where, well, we go into a POV of someone literally still sleeping on a tree. He isn't that far away from the Kremory State, but yet he just doesn't care. <sighs> but yeah. This is where, well, we go into mostly everyone just shocked to hear about this. Irina was the most kind of questionable and actually excited to see how Issei looks like. This is where, well, Sirsex noticed the kind of saddened look about mostly Grius and her whole entire barrage. But yeah. This is where, well, mostly uh, since, uh, what's it called? Gasper or even what's it called? Ozzy didn't go. They're actually excited to see him because they don't actually know what exactly happened during the battle. But yeah. But this is where, well, Mosi, uh, Sarsak says, so where is he? The swear, well, Mosi, uh, Rias kind of said, I do not know. He teleported out of the way before we can even question him any further. So I have no clue where he's at. This is where, well, someone started kind of walking upstairs. And this is where he's yawning. And this is where he's like, yeah, that was a good ass sleep. But I still need more. This is where, well, mostly he's like walking upstairs. This is where a person with mostly a white hat, darkish brown hair. This is where, well, he is dripped the fuck out looking just like this right here. And this is where, well, he has a sword next to him because, well, yeah, he doesn't know. Well, he has nowhere to kind of put it at. He can put it in his back, but nah, it's not a sword thing like that. He just carries that shit because it is scalpel. But not the point. This is where, well. He is sighing, well, not sighing, just yawning, and this is where, well, he's kind of walking up to the Grammar State, and mostly not Grammar State, the whole kind of group. This is where, well, mostly the person says, huh, it looks like Loki is in back in one piece. Well, then again, I am not going to put him into back into pieces. Well, I am going to put him back into pieces if he attacks me. But other than that, this is where, well, mostly this person right now snaps his fingers and says, room. This is where, well, he then managed to fix the Loki into mostly back to normal, which Loki was surprised. This is where he glares at mostly Issei, and Issei says, If you attack me, I will cut you into more millions of pieces. Loki says, You think I will be afraid of you? This is where he was about to attack Issei, until both of his arms were literally cut off of him. And this is where, well, Loki wanted to use his mouth, but this is where, well, literally a scalpel, a little knife literally stabbed into his tongue, shutting him up. Shut up already. This is where, well, mostly Loki was shocked, and this is where, well, Loki could not do anything. Well, at least you have legs, so yeah. Which you only have one. This is where, well, another leg was cut off and going back into the crater, which Loki just face plam into the fate, um, mostly ground. This is where, well, he just says, other than that, don't be annoying, don't be a bitch, and don't shut, and don't... Well, how should I say, shut the fuck up most of the time. This is where, well, uh, everyone was just shocked to see mostly Issei move really fast, but he didn't, like, blood did not spill when Issei cut mostly uh, Loki. So, of course, Odin was a little interested in his abilities. He even tried to use uh, the Almighty Eye, I think that's what it's called. I forgot what is Odin's kind of special ability where he can see everything. Well, not see everything, not the future entirely, but know what exactly everything ability are. When he tries to look at Isik, the ability doesn't show up. He doesn't know, understand what it is entirely. There's something else that shows up, and it's called Conquerors. This is where, well, he is confused at that. But yeah, this is where, well, we go into most of Isik saying, other than that, I'm going to be going already. Or, mostly I'm going to my room, because fuck, I'm tired. 
That's right. Well, mostly Issei walks past everyone and goes to the kind of grammar estate and just goes inside and kind of goes to his room. Well, mostly the room that he was supposed to be assigned to. But yeah, Issei kind of just walk in, doesn't care, and yeah. We go into a time skip later, and of course, mostly Gaspar, Ozzy, and even with the Kah Irene were shocked and how Issei looked like. He's taller than all of them, literally. This is where, well, he also became much more edgy somewhat, but of course, and less caring, like literally, but not the point. But we go into mostly, it's kind of like a dinner, kind of where they're eating right now. Everyone is being respectful, and then we go into Issei's POV. Issei literally has his legs on top of the table, having both of his arms behind him, and literally he's asleep. <sighs> yeah, he didn't care. This is where, well, he has his sword next to him, but he just is asleep fully. <sighs> this is where, oh, mostly everyone was kind of shocked to see mostly Issei's manners just being thrown out the window literally. Like, he doesn't care. What the fuck should he care so much about this shit? He doesn't give a damn. This work well, mostly Rias is actually wanting to use a bit of her magic to make sure that Issei actually use proper manners. This work well, mostly Grace V and even Sarsex are sweat dropping at this. Sarsex is kind of, not a little disappointed, but just confused in why Issei is acting like this entirely. Grace V actually wants to put manners into Issei because he's not being really respectful. This is where both Zioticus and even what's it called, Val uh, I forgot mostly Rias' mother's name, but this is where, well, they both seem kind of confused and why the Red Dragon Emperor is just kind of acting like this. This is where, well, Irina isn't there. She even wanted to talk to him, but Irina just went with Michael, but not the point. This is where, well, uh, Ozia and even what's it called, Gaspar are confused. Gaspar is actually amazed his older brother right now grow a kind of like beer. Like a small kind of beer, and of course, he does have mostly, uh, well, kind of beer, but he also has like earrings in his ear. Yes, he does have earrings in his ear, like golden earrings. He also does have multiple tattoos. We'll see on his hands, he does have tattoos, and his fingers literally, he has letters that li literally just spell the word death. But of course, the word, well, he seems not to really care too much, but yeah, that's the word, well. We go into mostly um, Issei still asleep. This is where, well, right now, Rhea decides to stand up, and this is where she says, Issei. This is where Issei ignores her entirely. This is where, well, mostly Rhea says, Issei Hiro. This is where Issei keeps ignoring her. And this is where, well, Rhea gets angry, and this is where, well, she was about to send, like, her own magic of destruction stretch with Issei, which she did, but of course, Issei didn't even use his sword, didn't even use his other ability. He just swiped it away. He, like, he just yawns and slap the hell of it he just like bitch smack it and then it's gone it just dispels this is where you say say what what the hell do you want this is what you say said with such an annoyed tone this is where he gets up and this is where well he is, is still sitting down in a chair but this is where uh he's yawning right now getting annoyed and this is where Rhea says huh i call your name multiple times yeah 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 i didn't hear i didn't care leave me alone what the hell do you want anyway this is where, well, Rhea said, huh? I'm your master. You should, this is where he says, shut up already. God, you're a prophetic master for anything. For God's sakes. If who in the fucking right mind decides to send you straight to fight Loki? I don't know who the hell decides to do that. But they were fucking stupid in the first place to send the fucking children straight to fight a god. Literally, they could have sent anyone else. Are they really trying to kill you off that fast and even stone it that fast? I'm surprised. I didn't care too much. But you know what? I showed up because why the fuck not? I wanted to fight Loki. Just because, well, I wanted to see how strong he was. He needed some heart. Uh, he needed a heart exchange, but not the point. But this is where, well, he says, this, but that's not the fucking point. <sighs> Look here, you freaking brat. Why do you keep bothering me? Why the hell do you keep saying, I'm your master, you should listen to me, blah, 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 fuck off, you bitch. This is where Issei right now screams at Rias, which Rias kind of shudders a little bit. This is where, well, making both uh, Sursex and even Grace be kind of narrowed our eyes. Issei says, God damn it. This is where, well, even Azul's there, and he's shocked to just hear how Issei talks. He is completely different from his training. This is where, well, Issei said, oh, for fuck's sakes. Man, where the fuck am I gonna leave? Oh yeah, I'm gonna leave early. Because fuck this place. 
fuck the devil society, fuck everything. I'd rather go back being a normal fucking human. Actually, I can do that. He said things about it and says, yeah, I can use my ability to take them out. This is where, well, mostly someone in his head says, you know, it's not a good idea to do that. What happens if you make literally the devil world, the fallen angels, and even angels your enemy, then I cut them the fuck down. This is where, well, mostly someone says in his head, Dietrich says, no, easy, don't. Don't do it. Just keep talking. Just just be nice to the Grimmery. This is where, well, he says, so you want me to be nice to a girl who literally fucking had me kill just to join her stupid parage yes fuck you Diedrich. shut the hell up you know what no how about this he says says mute this where well he completely kind of disconnected mostly the talk with Diedrich, making Diedrich just shocked and just why in his eyes realizing that Issei is going to do something stupid now he's trying to reconnect with Issei but Issei is refusing to he's using a bit of his hawking well, a bit of his mostly spiritual energy that's called Hawking to stop Diedrich from actually intervening and being such a bother and a pain in the ass to deal with. But yeah. But we go into mostly, uh, well, we go into mostly Issei going back outside. I swear, well, Rias is kind of just a little bit scared, but this where, well, sir, uh, well, not sir, it's like mostly Azul decides to speak up and says, So, how was everyone's training? This is where, well, mostly everyone speaks up and other things. This is where, well, just trying to avoid the mostly fight between Rias and even Isik, which is like Pawn versus like King, but literally the Pawn won, but not the point. This is where, well, Azul decides to go speak up, well, try to ask Isik. This is where both Azul and even Sir Sex and even was a car. Grace would be everyone in the table just wanting their eyes after seeing what Issei was doing. Issei uses his ability to take out eight palm pieces from his body and it didn't kill him, also taking out the demonic energy. Which, not the demonic energy just yet, but that's where Issei says, Huh, I did it. I got them out. Yeah, fuck that. This is where, well, mostly Issei says, Thank goodness it was 100% precision to actually survive. This is where, well, Issei didn't care because he knew that it was 100%, but not the point. This is where, well, mostly, as I say, Issei, what are those on your hand? This is where Issei says, oh, these? These are just my old eight pawn pieces that I won't fucking need anyway. Because you see here, Rias, I won't need them because I never fucking, well, how should I say, accept that you're offered to fucking join in your parade. You were the one to ask me, or not ask me, you were the one to send fucking a fallen angel straight to me, kill me, and revive me. You stupid fucking whore. This is where, well, right now Reyes was shocked and even worse, right now fearing for the fact that Issei actually knew about that. And this is where, well, Issei said, now, take your stupid palm pieces back towards you. This is where, well, Reyes was shocked. This is where she gets hit by them. And this is where, well, she kind of a little bit wanted to cry because Issei literally just threw them at her, didn't care, and just didn't give a damn. This is where everyone was shocked to hear about mostly, not everyone, mostly, some of those who actually did agree with uh, Rias' plan, like Akuno, uh, Kaneko, and even Kiba were actually quiet, but the others were kind of shocked, like Gasper and Asia. This is where even Zenobia, this is where, well, Azul says, what? This is where, well, he glares at mostly Rias, but decides to kind of go back to kind of seeing Issei. Issei said, other than fucking that, I should also get out of my magic capacity. This is where he says, says room. This is where he takes out this like ball of red energy, but it had kind of blue energy also. It was both his like human magic and also his, what's it called? Uh, demonic energy. So this is where, well, he says, says, this is literally my magic capacity. If I take it out of my body and I just toss it straight to you, then those evil pieces will never be able to reincarnate me again. I will be a normal human. Fuck yeah. Also, this ability doesn't use magic, so I'm fucking good. Hell yeah, that also means I can't be tracked. Hell yeah. He says he's kind of just telling them all the benefits and reasons and just taking out his magic. This is where Aaron wind their eyes and this is where I say, wait, Issei, we can talk about this. I know Rias might have done that, but this is where you can still be a demon. Issei says, shut the fuck up, Azo. I am not being a demon for anyone. I'm not a damn servant. I'm a goddamn pirate. Well, you know what? Fuck it. I am a pirate. Fuck you, fuck this, I'ma go do my own shit. Other than that, it says sad. Here's a magic ball thing and other than that, room. Right now he then snaps his fingers and say, shamble. This is where he gone. He disappeared. Everyone wind their eyes up to hearing how Isaac uh, did that. Also before I kinda I skip a little bit apart, 
But mostly Issei did kind of mention towards everyone about how their training was literally fucking garbage. He even roasted Gasper and didn't have any care or any like feelings of protection for Ozia because he kind of just got rid of those emotions. Because he never did care too much but this is where well, he admit them all. And didn't care. Disappeared, walked away, just didn't give a damn. But yeah. This is where well, we go into mostly everyone. Mostly everyone starts crying. Rias was terrified. She was fearing her kind of brother, of course, her mother, her father, and the fact that mostly Issei literally disappeared, took out his eight palm pieces, took out his demonic energy with his magic kind of capacity of a normal human, making him literally be untrackable, also being untainable, mostly being, can't really be reincarnated again, and also from the fact that he has abilities that are not magic related at all. Making him one of the most dangerous kind of straight devils. Well, it's not a straight devil because he's not a devil in the first place. He's just a straight human or whatever they're going to have to call him. Because Issei has also the Red Dragon Emperor's kind of booster gear. Unless it's in the magic kind of capacity thing. This is where, well, they narrowed their eyes onto the magic capacity. And this is where, well, we'll see. Azo had to kind of grab the magic capacity. And this is where, well, he was wondering if there's green in it which you notice there's actually is green this is where well he's confused in who he's actually going to give this magic capacity so mostly the person can have it until this is where someone actually appeared mostly it was none other than what's called so two people actually appear out of mostly a door now these two are actually mostly uh what's it called two daughters of sir zex now, one girl actually has, like, short white hair, like, short kind of silverish white hair, similar to that gray sippy, and the other girl has kind of reddish long hair, and, of course, kind of reddish eyes. Now, well, not, yeah, reddish eyes, while mostly the girl that's next to her is actually also reddish eyes, but not the point. This is where, well, one is named Lucina, and the other one is named Laura. Laura is the girl with red hair, while Lucina is the girl with super hair. But this is where, well... Both of them are actually the twins. They're twins, and they're actually like twin sisters and mostly daughters of mostly Sergex. Which mostly yes, that also means that they're kind of not older. They're actually seventeen and a little bit younger than what's it called, uh, Rias. But this is where well, both of them are actually mostly the older sister of mostly uh, what was it called, Milicus, Milicus uh, Grammary or Milicus Lucifer. Not the point. This is where well, mostly. They are basically just the older uh, girls until this work. Well, we'll see. They kind of say, hello, father. What exactly happened? We heard kind of like screaming. Well, not screaming. We'll see like a frustration, anger of a male voice. And of course, kind of like saying some words and disappearing or whatever happened. This work. Well, we'll see both uh, Sir Sex says, uh, this work. As I say, that's it. You. This work. Well, he kind of asked Laura. Laura says, yes. How strong is your fire infinity? This is where R66 says, What are you thinking, Azo? This is where, well, we'll see. Uh, Laura says, My infinity is strong. Why? Well, I want you to have this magic capacity ball to help you increase your magic. This is where, well, most of Laura says, Okay. Wait, let me just first take out something. This is where he, uh, right now, Azo, right now, uses his own magic to try to take out the demonic energy and also the human energy and take out the green ball. This is where he gave it towards mostly Laura, and this is where Sergex says, "Wait, Laura, do not just just take that from uh, Azo." Laura says, "What is it anyway?" This is where, well, Azo says that is supposedly the Red Dragon Emperor boosted gear. What? Wait, what? But isn't the Red Dragon Emperor in what's it called? In what's it called? My um, what's it called? Ants Parage? No, he's not. He disappeared. He just didn't care. He gave the magic capacity of his human magic. Also, demonic energy, and probably Diedrich is that one, but also got rid of his evil pieces. And he has an ability that he can do that, but not the point. He can, he's literally untrackable, and we do not know where he's at. Laura nodded and decides to just take the green ball. This is where, well, mostly she focused on mostly the energy she just consumed, and this is where, well, or mostly just absorbed into, uh, into her body until she realized. She is talking to a reddish dragon who looks like he's crying in tears. This is where well, the red dragon is saying, Oh my god, god damn it, you say, Why? Why are you like this? We could have been the strongest partners ever, and yet you leave me. You leave me, you bastard. 
This is where, well, Laura says, are you okay? This is where Laura is jogging from Laura has eyes, his greenish eyes at mostly Laura. And saying, who are you? Wait, you're a demonic brat, the pure blooded. So that's what he just threw me into. He just threw me into an Azo, and then Azo decides to put me into another fucking body. So that's sort of a bastard. And this is where Laura says, are you okay, dragon? No, I'm not okay. Okay, do you want to talk about it? Yes, I do want to talk about it. This is where Laura says, okay, we can talk about it. And this is where Diedrich right now kind of shows his frustration, his anger. He's right now really angry at the fact that what Issei did entirely. He is feels betrayed. He feels like he couldn't stop Issei from not doing something stupid and selfish. Because Issei has become much more selfish. And much more just by himself and not caring too much. He pushes anyone away. He doesn't care. Literally, that's what he did. <coughs> and this is where, well, mostly Laura is surprised to hear what DJ talks about. This is where, well, he talks about mostly Issei getting a phone call. But it was mostly like a snail kind of talking to him. <clears throat> this snail kind of talked to mostly Issei, talking about mostly someone kind of dying. And of course, that position is now free. And of course, Issei decided to take the position. And this where, well, he was, it was basically during the fact that he had to meet up with Tani. Now, Tony really just couldn't, like, convince Issei not to go. So, of course, it worked well. Tony had to lie and had to just kind of let Issei go and go do whatever in the human world. And that's where everything kind of went down. <clears throat> he found out that Issei is basically mostly a, well, he's not entirely a part of, well, he is a part of the Kyoto family. But one time he accidentally joined the Marines, or not accidentally, one time he got kidnapped when he was younger. And of course, where well, he met a strange blonde haired person that helped him out. Of course, this blonde haired person right now tried to help him out with a sneak, uh, sickness that Issei had. And of course, Issei had a weird looking fruit that are working his new powers, mostly something that is called the Ope Ope no Mi. A uh, really OP devil fruit that mostly uh, Dietrich kind of says. And this is where Dietrich says the abilities are unknown because every time I try to even like talk to him or like he uses his own abilities with me, I can never understand it because he said never explained it to me. And I cannot use it myself. This is where, well, <coughs> where now Laura nodded, saying, I see. So, what exactly is Issei right now doing? He's probably a warlord right now. He's going to try to assassinate someone who is quite dangerous and a criminal in the underworld. Or not underworld, in the underworld of the humans. I see. Should I tell this to my parents? No. I I want to go help him. I want to actually be by him uh, by his side like a friend. More well, like a friend, like a kind of well, wife, like this where well, Laura says, "Wait, wait, wait, wait. wait. Did you just say wife?" This is where DJ cover up, her, uh, up his mouth, and this is where, well, Laura narrows her eyes and says, Are you actually a female dragon, not a male dragon? Right now, DJ kind of just looks away, right now, blushing. This is where, well, mostly Laura says, Hey, hey, what is your actual name? If it's not DJ, can you are actually a female? What is it? Akane. This is where, well, the uh, well, mostly dragon just said, and of course, in a very female kind of tone voice. This is where, well, right now, making, well, Laura kind of widened her eyes and sees, I see. Can I see your human form? This is where, right now, Akane growls and decides to just show her human form. And is literally a female. This is where, well, a reddish hair beauty with mostly her, mostly scarlet red hair. Of course, she has kind of greenish eyes. And this is where, well, she's wearing an outfit that can barely cover up her figure. But this is where, well, she's just saying, this is how I look like. Laura, Laura Grammar, Lucifer, or Lucifish. This is where, well, mostly, um, Laura says, Aw, you look amazing. You know that? This is where, well, making Akane blush and says, Yeah, I want to show this to Issei when, well, when he got stronger. When I can actually think of him to be one of my mates. Or mostly for me to be one of his mates in the near future. But no, what Issei did is do something selfish. He did something out of revenge entirely. I see. So, should I... No, do not tell your parents about it. I don't want mostly Issei to have the devils on his back. Even though I hate how he stupidly just got rid of me, I'm not going to just tell the devils and where exactly Issei would be at. Because Issei would be hunted down by a lot of groups. He knows that. He just doesn't care about it. He wants revenge. 
because that blonde haired man that I talk about, he was the only father figure that Issei can actually kind of show to be a true father figure when he was a child. He doesn't see his father as his true father. He sees that man as the father figure that he always wanted to have. I don't know his name, but Issei knows his name, knows who exactly he is, but yet he doesn't tell me. This went well. Laura nodded and says, I see. So, before we go, uh, before I go, um, is Albion a actually girl instead of being a guy? <sighs> yes, her name is Shira. This is where, well, Laura says, oh my god. That makes sense in how mostly Valerie got in, well, mostly the white dragon empress being Valerie Lu uh, Lucifer just got in Albion. This is where, well, mostly, or Shiro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that doesn't make any sense. Do you just go to male host or basically female host? Where well, we go to any, okay? But I never decide to show my voice or even tell my true name because, well, we all got a bunch of perverted male hosts. And Issei was no different? Issei was different. He was more gentle and kinder. But when he got that phone call, he became a totally just different person. He met up with a person named Sengoku, a marine who was actually quite powerful and could probably rival me and Albion but we do not know that much about his power but he had a very strange strong aura to him but other than that we don't know anything else I see so um should I what I do should I ask the white one mm, well if Valerie hears about this you probably go crazy and want to actually fight EC maybe a group will go after him the chaos freak or something like that which I do not want that uh, can you leave the underworld? Yeah, I can. I mean, my father would allow me, but yeah, I think my mother won't. I see. Well, if you can, I want you to go to a specific place to see if Issei's going to be there. So we can talk and get more information and why he left. Or not left, but went towards the place that he needs to be at to get revenge. I see. Okay. Let's see where, well, mostly, uh, mostly not Kenny, mostly Laura kind of said, sure, I'll do that. Let's see where, well, mostly uh, Kenny says, thank you. Thank you so much. She hugs Laura and Laura's like, uh, you're squishing me, I'm dying. This is where she appears back outside into the real life until the sir as it says, is that the boosted gear you're talking to or is it just some different dragon? This is where, well, mostly Laura says, that is Dietrich I'm talking to. Of course, it's where Dietrich dies and thank goodness that Laura decides to use the fake name. This is where, well, Laura says, other than that, I am not considered to be the Red Dragon Empress, but not the point. Uh, this is where, well, mostly, uh, Laura says, I'm gonna have to train how to use it, because Issei left, and, of course, Diedrich does not understand why Issei left, neither. This is where, well, mostly, leaving him with this and other things. This is where, well, everyone kind of sighs and just nodded. This is where, well, mostly Reyes asks Laura if she will be in. This is where mostly Laura kind of glares at Reyes and says, No, I'm not doing it. As you heard exactly from Dietrich and what you did for Issei, you reincarnated him without his even vote or ask him or any of that? That's kind of selfish. Can't believe I had a selfish aunt. This is where, right now, Laura kind of walks away from mostly Reyes and decides to ask, uh, well, mostly, um, so I should mention how Laura looks. This is how Laura kind of looks, but yeah. Laura Grimmery, but yeah. Basically daughter's, uh, well, mostly uh, Sergeant's daughter, but yeah. So this is how Lucina looks like. Well, mostly in the maid outfit, but not the point, but yeah. This is where, well, both Lucina and Laura decide to leave. And of course, the work, well, right now, Lucina says, I'll be leaving. I'm going to my room. Where right now, Lucina and Laura, but yeah. This is where, well, right now, Sir Sex and everyone kind of swatch up, but yeah. Now, they don't know where Issei went, but they can only hope for the best. But for right now, I'll be leaving the offer for part two of this. What if? Other than that, bye soon. Yeah.